As we begin our work in Chapter 4, we're going to focus in this section on dealing with rates, ratios, and proportions. So when they want you to write something in simplest form, this is really focusing on that idea of ratio. So if I'm focusing on a ratio, I take this and write it as a fraction, the order it's written. So the first number you come across would be the number that goes on top, and the second number that you come across will go on the bottom. Now the one thing you need to remember with a ratio is you have to reduce it just like you do with a fraction. So this would both, both of these would have a factor of 2 in common, which would reduce down to 5 over 3. Now it's important when you do ratios that you actually leave it as a fraction. So it is important at this point that if it's 5 over 3 and I can't reduce it anymore, that I actually leave it in that form as a fraction. Kind of nice in this section. You don't have to worry about mixed numbers in that kind of a setting. Only, again, when you're talking about ratios does that happen. So when I'm down here and I'm looking at the next one, this word 2 works just like this sign up here we had with the colon that, that reminds us of a time sign, I guess. Um, first number that is mentioned goes in the top. Second number that's mentioned goes in the bottom. Now I can go through on this and reduce it. These both have a factor of 6 in common. So this would reduce down to 8 over 11. And that's going to be my final reduce. So when they ask you to write it in the simplest form, you do need to remember that this has to do with writing a ratio. Now there's also going to be an idea of unit rate. So whenever you see the word unit rate, you're going to have to think that there's going to be some kind of dividing that's going to go on. So if I look at this one and I'm concerned about how to solve this, I would take this and actually do the 396 and I would actually divide this by 36. In other words, I want to figure out how many dollars they make for actually working one hour. So a unit rate is based on how much it is for one. So I'm actually going to set this up as 396 divided by 36. So that would go in there once with 3 left over. Bring down the 6. 36 goes into 36 once. Which means in this one that she would have made $11 for working one hour. That's what unit rate is based on. Okay, here's another unit rate. In this unit rate, they want to know how many miles you travel 264 miles in 4.8 hours. So miles per hour is going to be our unit rate. So we're actually going to take our miles and divide them by hours. Now on Blackboard, when you get this little box to put your answer in, a lot of times you're going to see something that looks like this. And that's going to actually give you another hint that it's going to be miles divided by hours. So I physically need to take the miles and divide them by hours. So 264 divided by 4.8. Now you do need to remember in this problem that I have to move this decimal over 1 and move this over 1. So I'm going to add a 0. So this is really like taking 48 and dividing it into 2,640. So let's see. 48 doesn't go into 2. It doesn't go into 26. But 48 probably goes into 264 probably 5 times. So let's see times 5. 240. That's probably as close as I'm going to get without going over. So 240, and I'm going to subtract. So I have 24 left over. Bring down my 0. And this 240 is exactly 5 times. So that means if you went 55 miles per hour, that after 4.8 hours, I will have driven. I will have driven 264 miles. Okay. Now, to determine if something's a proportion, this is kind of the easy thing. Really, what you have to do is cross multiply to make sure these things are equal. So, in this case, I would have 23 
times 2, which is 46, and the other direction is 19 times 16. So if I do 19 times 16, number 304. Now if it's a proportion, these two numbers would be equal. Since this is not equal, it's not a proportion. So it's a pretty easy, straightforward method of where to solve it. Now determine if it's a proportion, maybe the directions. Um, but you'll see an equal sign with some kind of question mark over it. And really it's either it's not a proportion or it is a proportion. And sometimes they do it's kind of true-false. True it is a proportion or false it isn't. So those are kind of the two ways that you'll hear them talked about. So let's try this next one. If I cross multiply, these would be my two pairs. So 24 times 5 is 120. 12 times 10 is 120. So these are equal. So it is a proportion. And that's really all there is to solving the ones that look like this. Okay, next page. Now these are, notice there's no question mark here anymore. They're telling you for sure these are equal. That means that whatever these equal, when you multiply them together, they have to be equal. Now the only way I know for sure both numbers is this way. So if I do 16 times 9, let's see, 54, so 5, or 4 carrier 5, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 would be 14, so it's 144. So no matter what I do, both directions have to be 144. So this one's fine. I know that 36 times something has to give me 144. So if I don't know what that is, I can take 36 and I can divide it into 144 and find out. And in this one, it will go in four times. Exactly. So that means in this one, it's going to be n equals 4. Now a lot of people will talk about these problems as cross multiplying and dividing. So I multiply the two that I know both of, which would be the 16 and the 9, and then divide by the 36 to get your n value. So that cross multiplying and dividing we'll talk about in this chapter and again in chapter 5. Now in this next one, same idea. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cross multiply. These two I can cross multiply because I know both of them. So if I do 120 times 1.5, I end up with 1,800. And on this one, I have to add one decimal place because this had one decimal place. So cross multiplying, they have to equal 180. Now I only know 30 in this direction. So if I take 180 and divide it by 30, that'll give me whatever n is, which would be 6. So on this one, n equals 6. Now listen, if you think it's n equals 6 and you're not quite sure, remember you can go back up here where n is at and you can actually put a 6 in it and cross multiply and make sure they both equal 180. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Now, next one. This is again, remember how we said you in chapter 3 you had to make sure you were done with all the fraction stuff. Had to be done with all the decimal stuff because they have both come up in that last problem that was all about decimals. This one's going to be about fractions. So you're going to see both of those concepts come up kind of over and over again. So in this one, remember we're talking about cross multiplying. So in this one, I'd have to do 8 times 5 and a fourth. So let's see, 8 over 1. Oops. I 
make it a multiplying already. And then if I change this to a mixed number, 4 is going to be on the bottom. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. Now, if I look diagonally on this one, I can reduce. 4 goes into both of these. Once into here, twice into here. So that's going to be 42 over 1. And then the number I didn't use was this 3 and a half. So I'm going to have to divide this by 3 and a half. Okay, so again, first one's completely fine. It's a fraction, no problems. Th this one has to be changed into an improper fraction. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So 7 over 2. Then remember when you're dividing that you have to flip the second guy. So the second guy in this one is going to be that 7 over 2. So that becomes 2 over 7. This becomes multiplication. I do know in this one I can reduce because 7 goes into itself once and into here 6 times. So that's going to be 12 over 1. So that means that in this one n is going to be 12. Okay, let's see if we can fit another one on here. Okay, now, these are ones where it's going to be important to read them and mark the facts. So in this one, on a map, 2 inches equals 125 miles. If two cities are 6.5 inches apart on a map, how far apart are they in real life? So first of all, I was using different colors just to kind of make it easier to look at. But really your job right now is to compare. We have inches and we have miles that are compared to each other. So in this one, 2 inches equals 125 miles. Now when you get to the 6.5, you don't know you know that that's inches, which would mean it'd go on the top here, because inches go on the top, but you don't know how far apart they are in real life. So it kind of makes sense that this miles part is what's empty. That would be where you put your N, your X, your question mark, whatever it is that you want to write there. Now my job is just like before. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cross multiply. So this direction I know both numbers. So 125 times 6.5 and I could go through and, and do my multiplication the long way but since my time is getting short here if I multiply those together it's 812.5 now the number I didn't use was the 2 so I'm going to take that and divide it by 2 so this goes in 4 times Oops. This doesn't go in here at all. Bring down the 2. Oh, let's fix that up a little bit. That looks completely jacked up. So 2 would go into 12 six times. I'm going to bring this decimal up. Bring the 5 down. 2 would go into 5 twice, which would be 4. And 2 would go into 10 five times. So that means on this one that n is going to equal 406.25 miles. Now, if you get an answer and you're thinking, geez, I don't know if that's right or not. Remember, you can put that number back in there for n and then cross multiply and make sure that they still equal 812.5. So if I put that 406.25 in here, multiply it by 2, I should get the same thing as I do in the other direction. Okay, now, most missed problem probably on the whole thing. So on this one, I'm again going to underline my facts. So this one, during a sunset, pole barn casts a shadow.